This is a 2023 Model Y standard range. This is one of Tesla's first vehicles to use the 4680 battery cells. Now one of the confusing things about this car when it came out is that Tesla, when they launched the 4680 battery concept, they said that it was gonna be more energy dense than the cells they had used previously. And so it was a bit confusing when the first vehicle they put it in, this 23 Model Y, standard range has a 279 mile range when the existing long range has a 330 mile range. Tesla has now confirmed the reason for that is basically production of the 4680 cell. So yes, they are meeting their energy density targets for this vehicle though, the production line is still ramping up to manufacture those 4680 cells. So they chose to put less of them in the battery pack of this vehicle and still deliver a decent range, keep the cost down and be able to make more vehicles instead of using more cells per vehicle and actually being able to produce less vehicles. With that mystery solved, the big question is 279 miles of range. Is that enough for me in my daily life? For us, yes it has been. I chronicled a road trip we went on. We did have to stop and charge once and we were experiencing significantly less than advertised range. So the big question is how do we have to drive to actually realize the advertised range of this vehicle? Now the best way to do this is to actually go for a drive and monitor the energy use of the vehicle in the energy graph in the vehicle. So this will tell us what our energy uses are and it will project how much energy we're using versus the EPA assumptions. So let's go for a drive. The first thing we're gonna do is do some driving out in the country, uh, mixed city country driving with speeds less than 60 miles an hour. Now we're just getting some initial results on the graph as we've gone 0.6 miles on the x-axis on the graph to tells us how many miles we've driven. Shaded in green are areas where we've exceeded the EPA range and the areas in yellow are where we have been less than the EPA range. And so down in the range tip sections, it gives us an idea of why that could be. Part of the reason today is in the mid thirties, I had this parked in the garage overnight. So it's the car itself thinks it's 47 degrees, but that'll continue to drop as we drive here. So we are definitely at a temperature below what the EPA test would be at, and that affects air density, it affects the temperature of the oil in the motors, it affects the temperature of the grease and the wheel bearings, a lot of different things. Um, but the main thing actually is the density of air, and it will increase aerodynamic drag as the temperature drops. But we're gonna see if we can meet EPA range estimate even at this colder temperature. I do have the climate controls on 70 and 72 for the other side. I've got the heated seats and the heated steering wheel and automatic, so I'm not uh, turning those things off. We're gonna see if we can still meet the range estimate with those things on and what it takes. We're now on a 55 mile per hour road with some traffic so we're going about 57 miles an hour letting radar crews determine our speed and we are not meeting range estimates the first two miles on our graph were the in-town mixed driving you can see there's some green mixed in with the yellow basically we were averaging close to EPA estimate Ever since we got on this higher speed road, we're not meeting EPA measurement. So the EPA range is a mix of city and highway driving. I guess you'd consider this highway. I'd consider this a fairly low speed though. But there's definitely a cutoff point where you're not no longer going to meet EPA range. And now this graph, had, there's a lot of information packed into this energy screen. Instead of drive, we can go to consumption. This is over 30 miles. We can change that on the bottom, but this is the last 30 miles. We've been averaging 260 watt hours per mile. 
basically right on the EPA range. We don't do, we occasionally do a lot of this steady state, higher speed driving. And if we go to drive, we can see we are consistently below the rated consumption for the vehicle at this steady speed, 60 miles an hour. Now, instead of talking percentages, we can talk about miles and range in miles and for that we need to select click next to the battery there you can see we've got 198 miles of range left according to it and then our graph switches to miles instead of percentages so let's do an experiment here this road isn't that busy let's creep our speed down to 50 miles an hour let's see what the threshold is to actually meet the rated range of this vehicle at a steady speed. Well, I thought that might do it, but at 50 miles per hour, we're still below the rated line. We got a little bit closer to it, but we're still not there. So we might have to turn off onto a different road to go slower and see what the cutoff is there. There's no one behind us. So let's creep down to 45 miles an hour well we're going 45 miles an hour and we're really close to the line but we have not been above it at all so I think we have to go even slower so we've slowed down to 40 miles an hour we're still not on the line let's go down to 35 see if that does it but I think we also have a decent headwind which is another thing to consider. So we'll turn around and go back the other way and find this threshold also. Um, all right, we're gonna head back the other way to try to negate the wind. Now we've got cars behind us, so we'll have to speed up. Okay, this road is a little bit too busy for us to go that slow, so let's pull off on a road that is less busy. And we'll go about 35 miles an hour and see if that gives us rated range. Well, we can tell immediately the dot on our graph turns green or yellow if you're above or below the rated line. And we were green for a little bit and then we turned yellow. So I think we're right about at the at the cutoff point, 35 miles an hour is the magic number. At today's temperature, see we've settled out about 37 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's quite low. Interesting development, I've kicked it up to 45 miles per hour and I'm still exceeding the rated range. I think the cabin got up to temperature. The climate system drag reduced and so our targets moving a bit here there also might have been some uh, wind direction change and or reduction in wind so i've gone back to the original loop where we've gone 55 miles an hour on the bulk of the yellow on our map just to see if it's more climate conditions and to see if we cruise at 55 miles an hour on this stretch again are we meeting range estimate? So this is very interesting now. At 55 miles an hour, we are still meeting the EPA range. So we can kick it up, let's kick it up to 60 and see if we're still meeting it. Okay, this is interesting. We're back on the original part of the road, uh, the 60 mile per hour cruising, and we're right on the estimate line so I think what's happened here is the cabin has gotten up to temperature and we're using less time and the climate system is using less energy. So we're able to cruise at 60 miles per hour and basically be right on the EPA rated range. You can see overall we've gone 29.2 miles and are exactly on the estimated vehicle consumption. We actually have used 0.2 miles less 
than the EPA range suggests. So we've just completed 34 miles of moderate speed driving and we're right at EPA range. We've used half a mile less than EPA range actually. So what does this tell us? If you drive 60 miles per hour or less, you're going to meet EPA range, even if it's 35, 37 degrees out, and you're using the climate conditions. Why is this? Well, it really has to do with aerodynamic drag, and the equation for aerodynamic drag is here, and we can see V is to the power of 2. What is V? V is velocity, or the speed at which we're driving. And because it's to the power of two, it's the most impactful piece of this equation. And we can see on the consumption side for our trip here, the last 30 miles, we've averaged 224 watt hours per mile. With driving below 60 miles per hour the whole time, we're actually exceeding the range. Let's see what happens now if we get in the highway and set our speed at 70 miles per hour. All right, we've been cruising at about 70 miles an hour. I gotta move past this car, it's going slower. At about 70 miles an hour for a bit now, and you can see our graph has turned orangish yellow meaning that we're doing worse in the stated range as expected. Interesting enough, on our range tips, it's telling us that we've lost 7.4 miles due to cold weather. It's 39 degrees now. And so if we looked at our 51 miles consumed, we would be beating the EPA range here theoretically if it was 70 degrees instead of 39. So for our last five miles of highway speed, 70 mile per hour cruising, our average use is up significantly up to 327 watt hours per mile. Well, that was a pretty interesting experiment. What did we learn? Well, first of all, it's April 22nd and it's still cold as heck here. But the more important thing that we learned is if you drive your Model Y standard range at or below 60 miles per hour, you're gonna meet or exceed the range estimates for it. But if you drive above that, you're gonna do slightly worse than the range estimates. If you wanna continue following along with my journey on this Tesla Model Y, the best way to do that is subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have more things coming out, monthly cost of ownership, how I'm dealing with it, any problems that arise, reliability, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Adios.